Today's presentation is about exponential technology, but before we begin there, I want to explain a little bit about revolution. There are political revolutions like the one in France, uh, military revolutions, uh, there are cultural revolutions like the uh, Green Revolution in uh, Iran a few years ago. There are economic uh, and societal revolutions like agriculture. And about a hundred years ago, we had what was called the Industrial Revolution. which uh, had some pretty bad effects on uh, society, as well as good effects. And right now we're going through what's called the information revolution. Now, through society, uh, we had prehistory for the first uh, uh, three million years. And since about 3,000 years ago, we've had what's called history. And that's where people start writing things down. And so it's easier to see and we've seen the ancient age and the medieval age modern age and the contemporary age so we're going through different ages now writing has been key to history well, of course that's why it's called story because you write a story down and the first kind of writing was done on clay tablets and then they figured out a new way to use a plant called papyrus to make what's called paper and then they bound together the paper into what are called books these books were written by people and copied it would often take a year to write a single book and to just make a copy of a single book and so there were very few books. They were very, very expensive. And uh, they all had mistakes in them. For each copy, when it was copied, there were mistakes. Each one was different. But then China first came along with what's called movable type, where you could have uh, the kanji put into a thing, and then you pressed the uh, ink onto the board and then paper onto the ink and then you had a printing press now it never took off in china because there are too many kanji and so it was not a very easy system to do but in germany with uh, many fewer characters letters in the alphabet uh, there's it became uh, much easier to make printed books now one of the first, first uh, most famous guys making these books is called Gutenberg. He was in uh, Germany and he started a revolution by making these copies uh, with movable type where you could rearrange the type and then print a page and then rearrange the type again and print another page. And you could print many, many copies of the same page and uh, have many copies of the book. Now, uh, for as far as inventions go, uh, and it probably it was has been rated the uh, most important invention uh, of history by this uh, Atlantic uh, column. They asked many, many uh, scientists and uh, academic people what was the most important thing, and most people said printing press was the most important. Okay, now. The thing is that in society, it started to have a big change on society because in those days, the church had the most power because uh, they uh, were organizing. The governments were not uh, very good. The kings were doing a very bad job. So the uh, government or the church took over as the leader of most uh, of the society in Europe in those days. Now, uh, but it switched with uh, these books. Now, uh, libraries and universities were uh, able to teach more people than just uh, just the uh, religious people. And so 
it uh, made a big change and a power shift over a hundred years to libraries and universities from the church. So that information is now made more popular and uh, more and more people have access to information. Regular people, not special people. And it's uh, secular, which means not religious. Okay, so it's uh, many of the, uh, the most, probably the most important book in uh, the early days was the Bible. And uh, it was, uh, and religious texts. But after that, there were more scientific texts and other things that uh, made it more popular. People were more interested in that kind of thing. Now, the church was uh, felt threatened with that, and oftentimes they would lead to book burning. Uh, and a hundred years later, though, Martin Luther, uh, who is uh, a religious person in Germany, uh, led a kind of re uh, revolution against the main church. The Catholic Church was the main church in Europe in those days. That was about uh, 500 years ago. And he took uh, 95 ideas and he put them up on the church door. Now that was a very common way to display your ideas and many people could read, but not so many because there was only one copy on the church door. But the big difference for Martin Luther, uh, many other uh Many other uh, religious people tried to protest against uh, the, the Catholic Church, and they failed. But he was successful because, in one reason, was that he uh, was able to print out all of his ideas in a book. And so many people read it, and they had uh, some more ideas against the Catholic Church. So the thing is that information is standardized. And so every copy of a book is the same. Now, before there were printing press, the monks would copy by hand writing, and uh, they always had a few mistakes. So every copy would make a mistake, and so every copy was different a little bit. So with the printing press, then popular culture expanded, and there was a new kind of a book. And the word novel, actually, the word novel means new. And so this new kind of a book, it's just called a novel. It has stories, and it's not religious, usually. And uh, there are uh, many, many different authors, uh, either a single author or many authors in a single book. But there were many more books. And the topics were much more wide-ranging. They were not just about religion. They were about all aspects, about science and culture and uh, other things. It, uh, books really made science possible. Uh, they could share knowledge and spread their work, and everyone could learn from everyone else. And so the system, whole system of science and sharing uh, your research was built around after uh, after the printing press. And it made nations possible. You could print out a, a contract uh, and agreements between countries so that both people had the same contract and they could check that and make sure uh, that uh, so they were able to make nations because of that. Now, an important idea about that here is the medium is the message. Now, a medium is how the information arrives. Is it in a book or a TV or a radio or newspapers? These are all different kinds of mediums or media. And that's the, the plural form. And the type of media actually changes how the messages are made, and it changes their meaning. With books, you can have much deeper ideas, but with newspapers, you have to do, go quickly 
and uh, do very short ideas. And so the whole writing and thinking system uh, depends on the medium. Now, as far as communication, though, there are three basic kinds of communication. Three kinds. Now, write this down. Yes? And the first one is one-to-one. -one. Okay? And it's two people talking. Uh, in the old days, with books, before the printing press, the monks would each copy. And one person was writing and one person was reading. And that person locked up that book because it was so expensive. And so that was a kind of a one-to-one -one book experience. But with printing press, uh, oh, and people talking, that's also one-to-one. -one. And uh, telephones, letter writing, that's all one-to-one. -one. But with books, printed books, you have one person writing and many people are reading. So we call that one-to-many. One to many. And, and this cause includes all of the broadcast mediums, uh, media uh, like radio and television. And that is a very, very different kind than one to one and one to many. Now, with the internet coming along, it's very much like a printing press. It's causing a revolution. There's more information sharing. It's, there's new ways to share information that are not possible with books. And the big powers don't like the Internet very much, usually, because it's changing. Uh, if you look at China especially, for example, they're very much afraid of the Internet. Okay, so, uh, sorry. On here, uh, the final one is many to many. And the Internet actually is a series of networks. And it's with many people reading and many people writing. And that's the biggest difference is that uh, with broadcast media, most people are just watching and listening and reading. But with the Internet, people are reading and writing or listening and speaking, watching and making videos. So that is the biggest difference there and the way that it's all connected up with uh, many people connecting to many other people. And the basis of this is called hypertext. And that's where you have a text that has links in it and it goes to another document. So there is no central document. There is no central place on the internet. And you can move around and the links become almost as important as the information in the documents. There's a big difference between groups and networks. Groups, if you think of like a small group uh, or even a club, those are all unified and they're private and they meet together and they're very closed and there's boundaries between that. But with a network, it's many, many different kinds of people working together. And it's very public. It's open. And there's lots of freedom to go in and out of the, the network. And, uh, and it's open so that uh, it's, uh, there's no boundary uh, at the edges. And uh, so that is... I'd like to now move on to the next section, which is looking forward into the future. And the primary idea of the future expansion is called exponential technology. Exponential means that it goes up very quickly after a short time. So if you look at uh, this graph here, you can see in 1400, there was the printing press, and in 1600, the telescope. And so these technologies are getting gradually more and more uh, sophisticated, more and more complicated. And the light bulb and the car. And right about the you know, man on the moon in the uh, 1960s. And finally, all of these other technologies are just coming at us more and more quickly. Uh, and it's more and more complex. Probably the biggest 
One is artificial intelligence right now. Uh, we're in the middle of a revolution. But it's bringing along all kinds of technology. And, for example, 3D printing, where you can download a, uh, a plan from the Internet and then build something right in your own home. Uh, you can um, do artificial intelligence, and uh, you can get a robot to do your dishes or uh, run around. Let me, I'll, I'll play this a little bit here. Okay, that's a, let's see, a nice little robot. Here's some other robots that are for, uh, in China, for manufacturing. Okay, robots. This exponential virtual reality is another one. Oops, sorry. And another one called augmented reality, which overlays. You can use your phone, and it will tell you information about each building that you pass and about the people that you pass. Other kinds of uh, intelligence augmentation. You can use computers and technology to make you smarter. That's the other IA, which is the opposite of AI. And finally, the singularity, which is an idea that computers very soon will become smarter than humans and be able to do communication and others better, which is a little bit frightening unless you think that uh, humans can maintain control. But what about me? What about you, actually? Uh, what do I think? And I think my job's prediction well, and I know from other articles that AI and robots will take away 6% of jobs over the, over the world. Okay, so if you have a job that is very repetitive, be careful. Yeah, And 47% uh, of jobs are in danger in the future. So you want to be careful about that. And for humans... You can see the red bars are going down, whereas the blue bars, robot working, is going up. So you will probably have many different jobs during your uh, career, and you will move from, and you will probably have to retire early because the robots will take over uh, your job. Except, there are some jobs that are robot-proof, something like a high school teacher. That is really, really difficult for AI to do. And so maybe for 50 years or 100 years, there won't be any high school teachers robots. And physical therapist, special ed teacher, nurse, and writer, those kind. Okay, I hope you have some questions uh, in the form on the side. If you do, please contact me. And that's all for this lecture. Thank you.